Hello. Oh, look. Just in time. Saki's visiting us. How you doing, buddy? You want to hop up on your rock and enjoy the fun? Yeah, you could do that. There he goes. Hello, everybody. There's Saki on the rock. I'll give you his view for a moment. It's uh, just about noon. There we are. He's on his rock. How you doing, buddy? You doing pretty good? And uh, we're sitting here looking at the Toria the Golden Nice and the, the Great Birch. And uh, I'm sitting here uh, underneath this uh, younger birch. This uh, much less attention getting birch. And I'm actually sitting up well, practically against it. I guess there's a little space. And uh, I just told Saki, I'm going to go do a meditation. And he hustled across the, the big lawn here away from the saws that we hear in the background. And he was definitely ready. You doing okay, buddy? And uh, wasn't sure where I was headed, as usual, uh, or what kind of meditation there'd be, as usual. <coughs> but as I walked along the lawn, um, and uh, maybe I can set it here for a bit, or for the whole bit, I'll see. And as I... Uh, walked along the lawn uh, see how that works yeah that's okay as I walked along the lawn I was kind of seeing the, the two birches you know it's just one great birch where uh, one of my teachers was, was betrothed beneath and that's the one everybody comments on their first time to the farm it's where your eye goes um, I think pretty much every time come to the farm for everybody and because uh, it means they they look past as they pull in on the driveway or walk in on the driveway they, they actually look through and past and beyond this lesser birch to the great birch on the lawn uh, so as I walked up to me I started kind of thinking about that idea of tuning into the lesser <clears throat> which I don't mean um, qualitatively um, just quantitatively it's lesser in age, lesser in girth, lesser in height lesser in um, its apparent unusualness uh, so tuning into the lesser in the face of the greater you know, there's a meditation I've done for many, 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 many years where, um, you know, I'll be at the sunset and, uh, and I'll look east or go to the Grand Canyon and look in the direction of the parking lot. You know, in the yin-yang, we have the the, the, the two uh, aspects, the, the, the yin and the yang, the, the mountain and the valley. You know, but within each, <coughs> there's the lesser yin, the lesser yang, the minor yin, the minor yang. Um, the little white dot in the center of the black yin portion of the Taiji Tu diagram. And then, of course, there's the black dot in the middle of the white yang. Half of the tai chi tool. So, there is this kind of reminder, implicit in this diagram, in this basic view of Taoism, <coughs> or this basic Taoist's view of the cosmos, the world, 
and that is um, there's some berries. That wasn't the answer, the end of my sentence, <laughs> when, in my mind when I started the sentence, but, ooh, berries. No, I set them here. Uh, you know, within the yin, there's that reminder of um, an alternate energy, an alternate expression. And in fact, in the yin-yang, uh, if we're in, for example, the yin side, it's at the yin's sort of greatest expression, you know, where, where, the, where the shape rounds and becomes sort of most yin, sort of trying to draw, you know, that portion. And it's right at this point where we'll have the white dot, the yang, that reminder of other within most. And so as I sit here observing the great perch, which you know everybody wants to see, I'm trying to see if we're aiming at it. <coughs> it's so easy to just be mesmerized and poetic and lyricize and, and soak in and address and humble myself to and ask after and observe and listen to and quiet for the great perch because of its sort of heightened place in this yin yang role. And so what I'm going to do, rather than close my eyes to it, or turn and open my eyes to the lesser, I'm going to purposely open my eyes to the greater. Take it in. Open myself to it. Become vulnerable to it. Listen to it. Address it. Bow to it. But without losing sight of the lesser to my back. There's a line in the Tao Te Ching about the yin and the yang being kept to the front and the back. Which I'm just putting mind of now. It's referenced in the classics of the Ne Jia Chuan studies. I'm just feeling into an opening with the greater birch, the great birch. Once I've established that opening to the greater, I want to increase my awareness to additionally open to the lesser. And when I'm able to do that, then I'm going to shift my focus to the lesser within the greater, which um, is experiencing the the fullness of my awareness.
So I'm sitting here upon the roots of this birch, beneath the canopy of this birch with its trunk, its spine, in line with my spine, you know, with its hanging branches as a shroud for my view. So I really am all but within this birch. But I'm facing something that really draws my attention. people across the pond talking at the moment, so that may be interrupting. I don't know if uh, this will pick it up or not. So. so I'm doing this practice with the birches, something external to myself. You can do it internally, you know, address something that's greater, maybe your brain or your heart, maybe the lungs as you breathe. And then in addressing that, don't lose sight of your appendix or your gallbladder or your extra kidney or the overmuch liver that we have. You know, all things that are um, relatively um, unnecessary. And we can carve away a lot of the liver and still live a full life. We can go without a kidney, we can go without a gallbladder or an appendix. Uh, can't go without the heart can't go without the brain. So it may be that your meditation is addressing, opening to the mind, to the brain, without losing sight of the appendix. And that could be imagined, it can be felt. It can be external, as I'm doing with the birches. be done in aspects of a single thing or single person. You know, when somebody's face lights up with a smile, we lose sight of their dirty feet. But we needn't. If you're in a crowded restaurant, of a din of dining, the music in the background, the hustle of the waiters and waitresses, the chatterings washing over you from all the many tables, perhaps the street noise outside, <clears throat> and then somebody extraordinarily famous walks in. In that moment, the restaurant's empty. You've turned the entirety of your attention to the greater. And you lose sight and hearing and tasting, etc. 
etc. You lose sight of all the lessers, the myriad lessers. And so <clears throat> the meditation is not to close off to the greater. The meditation is not to purposely turn towards the lesser, although that's a practice that I have, which I suggested uh, looking west at sunrise. Looking at the easily flowing traffic when you pass an accident on the other side. And this practice is to address the greater so that you feel its invitation, its lure. You feel your habitual. shift of self toward the greater. And yet, you develop and persist in a focus on the lesser to your back. One way of practice this is when I'm doing a physical activity, chopping wood, jogging, climbing, digging, I'll focus on my digestion, just that process that's happening, the peristalsis, the, the rumblings, I'll purposely shift my focus and try and let it persist there in the lesser, in the face of the greater, the sort of ego-driven Actions. Hi, Saki. How you doing, buddy? When I see a remarkable shiny stone. I'll shift my focus to a drab, done stone beside it or nearby. Taking in the shiny, fancy, special stone, but recognizing that focus can exist elsewhere. My attentions. can grasp beyond the obvious and great. Down at the marina, when the fancy yacht pulls in, maybe shift your gaze to the workman's oyster boat. And then return to the yacht with the eyes, with the face, with the heart, but without spurning the lesser, without closing off the lesser, without forgetting the lesser, and indeed, in fact, inviting the lesser into your experience of the greater. There's many, many ways to do this. I'm not talking you through a very specific one. I'm just talking about it sitting here myself, even though I'll watch the heron fly across or say hi to Saki or see a butterfly move across. The whole time I'm endeavoring to keep my awareness of the tree which I'm upon against, beneath, within. The less notable tree by all accounts. Give you a little bit of a, a view up of the tree. I don't know how, how that'll work or not. Let's try. That might be a pretty good. So I'm just going to breathe <coughs> here for a few moments. 
If I absolutely lose sight, I might shift into the tree to feel it. I might place my hand on the earth. I might shift my focus to the tree itself. That's why I'm doing this practice this way, as a practical practice. You know, the lesser is within my sort of reach or my senses. Hey, Saki. How you doing, buddy? You coming over to help finish the meditation? Yeah. Come on over this way. Well, sure. Come on. Here he comes. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Do you want to hop aboard here for a few minutes? Do you want to do that? Here he goes. There he goes. There he's probably a short visit on the lap. There he is. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming for this visit. Well, we were just going to finish up pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we were going to do. So I've shifted a little bit here, obviously focus on the cat, kind of lost sight of a little bit. I'm trying to maintain my awareness of the roots beneath me, the ones I've never seen, the ones I really don't ever think about. I sometimes think of the roots of to, you know, I will worry over its health and not think much of this. Saki sitting on my lap sniffing at the berries that I had just set down there as an offering. Yeah. So I think that's about all the time we have. I'm not entirely sure if we got cut off because a phone call just came through, but it seemed to self-cancel it, and apparently we're still recording. But I suppose we'll find out soon when I hit finish. So thank you for joining us. Thank you from the lesser birch. From the greater birch. From Sunday Farm.